Hello Fiber friends! I had a trip to the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival recently where I purchased these gorgeous luscious locks and I showed these off in that video where I talked about that trip and a lot of people asked how do you spin those and so I thought it was time to do a full like just go for it type of art yarn or textured spin. I prefer calling it textured spin just because I think that there's a lot of art and uh, different ways that art can be expressed with yarn and often when people say art yarn they mean the chunky textured stuff <laughs> but art yarn really can be just anything that you're intentionally expressing creativity with, in my opinion. Um, so I'm gonna call this textured yarn, but a lot of you might think of it as art yarn and that's fine. But I thought it would be fun to get out my uh, roving carter. This is my Louette roving carter and it is great for putting layers and sandwiches of chunky stuff and putting it through there to get roving that you can spin very easily into some really cool textured yarn. So uh, to do the spinning, I will be using my Ashford eSpinner 3. So if you've had questions about that, some of you have, uh, you'll get to see that today. And I think we should just go ahead and start digging around in the stash to find some fun stuff. So I'll go gather that and put it on the table and we can uh, design this yarn together. So let's get spinning. All right, friends, I went digging in my stash and I found all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so let's talk through the process of how I design a yarn like this with all kinds of stuff going on and texture. Um, because if you just start throwing everything in it, like a kitchen sink kind of bat, that could be a lot of fun, but it can also be a little bit overwhelming. And I want to make sure that my locks here are the star of the show. So I kind of think of it like, you know, if, if you're making a meal and you have an ingredient and you want that ingredient to be the focus, right? You're not gonna, you know, chop it up and mix it in with a whole bunch of other stuff and make like a casserole or something. You're gonna, you know, present it with things that complement it, but you're not gonna, you know, mix it up so much that it gets hidden in the dish. And so that's kind of the goal here is that we don't want to mix this up so much that it's hidden and we don't want to overwhelm it with a lot of other texture. So I was thinking, you know, we could go kind of tonal and bring in some of these purples, but <laughs> we also don't want it to be too much same, same, right? I, uh, I feel like it kind of, here, I'll hold it up so you can see. I feel like it kind of gets hidden in there and I want it to really pop. So then I thought, no, we're not gonna do any of this kind of mauve, mauve, purple, whatever. Uh, what if we do something that's a little bit more complimentary? And so this is like a dark navy blue. And I thought, oh, look, that's really beautiful. With that dark, dark navy blue, these really pop. So I thought this is a great canvas to put these on. So I'm gonna start with uh, this. It's wool, I'm not sure what breed it is. It's subcomb top. And so I think this is uh, where we will begin with that. And then what else though? I don't. I don't want it to just be this and then locks. I do want to have some other things going on. So I dug around, I found some Romney. I thought I could go for, since I'm not going with the pinks, I could go for some of this blue and add some of the lighter blue in there. So that's an option. I have some of this bamboo I could put in to get just kind of a little sparkle. And the thing about bamboos and silks, they're very, very sleek and shiny. And so it gives a very different kind of visual impression than when you have locks that are curly and very textured. So this can be kind of a good counterpoint because you don't only want to have like opposite complementary colors, but you also want to think about complementary textures as well. So I thought that could be fun. Or, you know, this is just a little comb top that is just very kind of blended and fuzzy. And it's not exactly in that pinky purple realm, but it's not as dark as the blue. Actually, I kind of like this. This might work well. And then what else? I brought out a whole bunch of other stuff just to see. I have some Surrey locks, but I think... 
I think this is sort of a repeat of texture. Even though when you open these up and open this up, it looks very different. Maybe I'll put a pinch of these in there. I'm not quite sold on it though. And what else? Oh, I brought out these kind of just fun yarns. This was uh, Patton's Cotton Top, but it's very, very squiggly texture uh, on there, and I kind of like that. And then this is some old sock yarn I have that it sort of has a rainbow to it, but it shifts colors very quickly. Like, each color is only this much of the yarn. So it's kind of an interesting <laughs> sock. I didn't like it, I tore it out, but if you've been here a while, you know that I have a thing about socks and getting them finished as in I don't. <laughs> so here's what I'm looking at though with what we've built so far. This actually kind of looks pretty neat and I'm thinking what if we do a very textured spin and then we ply it back with this. There's plenty of it and I think that could look really cool. I also brought out some of the sparkly thread. So maybe some auto wrapping could be fun. Maybe. I have two of these. These are Guterman, uh, no. These are Sulky, Sulky Hollow Shimmer. I think I like that. Let's put some sparkles. What other sparkles do I have? I have this whole box of sparkles and I have very sparkly to kind of sparkly. I have, let's see, do we want pink sparklies? Hmm, I think with the sparkles, I am gonna match color um, because the texture of it is so different. I'll give it a little bit of a match that way. All right, so we're almost there, and I think I brought out this whole bin of silk, but I don't know if there's really any silk. I'm just not quite feeling it. With the silk, I mean, I have this tiny little nibble of recycled sari silk. I'll throw that in there. Okay, so I think we're almost decided here. Oh, I had this. This is shredded silk. I don't know. This actually, I kind of, I kind of like this because it's sort of the same dark, rich color as the navy, but it's like if you took these locks and made them much darker, added a bunch of black to it, and uh, muted that down a lot. Kind of like that. I don't think I want to do these big pops of color with the silk though. I don't think I want that. And. I don't think we'll do the bamboo. I think we have enough of this other stuff. I think that's plenty. I don't think we need any of those this time. So there it is. This is the plan for the yarn. I am going to blend all of this up on the Louette Junior drum carter. And after this is all blended, then I'm going to spin it and I will auto wrap this sparkly thread as it's being spun. Then when it's done being spun, I will ply it with this yarn and we will see what happens. It's going to be interesting. I'm not entirely sold on this one. I might change this out after I see what this yarn looks like, but I'm definitely sold on the sparkles. So there it is. All right, to work with locks, you do need to open them up a little bit. So I'm gonna spend a little time here just kind of pulling these open and fluffing them by hand. If you don't do this, they don't really have a lot to grip onto and they can just fall off of the yarn. So I don't want to pick them open so much that they lose their curl structure. I do want to have some curl poking out here and there, but I do need some of that frizz to uh, hold on to the yarn and give it some integrity. So I will go ahead and do that and be right back when it's done. Before, after. You can see that they are fluffed up like a cloud almost, but not totally because I still have a lot of this texture left. So that will show up in the yarn. So that's how much I wanted to pick them. I think this is perfect. This is, oh, this is gonna be so pretty.
loving how this is coming out so much. So here is one of the carded bats all rolled up and here is what it looks like when it's kind of opened up a little bit and I hope you can see all the sparkle because <laughs> it's a lot. And I have been debating since I've seen these side by side. I'll hold them up side by side. You can debate with me. I And let me know right now in the comments what your thoughts are and then uh, see how it turns out. So this is what we have and I love it. I love, love, love it so very much and with uh, these sort of other hidden colors in there. So what I'm thinking I should do now, I'm still debating about auto wrapping. Uh, the reason I like, and if you don't know, auto wrapping means that this will go in a dish <laughs> down below where I'm spinning and I'll attach the thread and as I'm spinning, I'll just let it feed onto the yarn as I'm spinning and it'll just bounce around in there and do its own thing and go where it wants and willy nilly. But I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to control it. It's just going to get pulled and drawn up into the yarn as it goes. The reason I like auto wrapping, aside from that you can get cool texture and, and color and sparkles and things, is that it does help a little bit to secure things on the yarn, especially if you're going to leave it as a singles. Um, it can help hold things down, especially if you have stuff that might fall off or fly off. And because I have so much of this uh, glitter stuff in there, that thread might help. But also if you ply after you have auto wrapped and you ply, you take some of that twist out, you can get some really cool kind of dangly loopy doopy things. All these technical terms today, willy nilly, loopy doopy. <laughs> um, they are technical terms, to be clear. What I'm envisioning now, because I thought about having this and then having those loops coming off. So what I'm envisioning now is actually doing this as a regular, uh, regular schmegular, <laughs> more technical terms. It just it's just feeding this on as a regular lock spin, but then alternating it with this as a textured spin and not plying in the end, just leaving the whole thing as a singles. And that's okay to change at this point. Um, it would be harder to change if I was planning to ply and put a whole lot of twist in it, unless I wanted an ener energized singles. But the point is that if you're constructing a yarn, especially like this, where it has a lot of stuff going on, for me, I always like to put too much in and then peel it back as I go and as I see how things blend together and work together and sit side by side once, you know, the bats are carded, etc. And so that kind of helps me better envision what the final yarn is going to look like and so I can like put too much on it and then peel it off until I get it just right. It's easier to peel things away during the process than to throw things in during the process. Generally. Generally. <laughs> Not always. No rules here. This is this is very freeform. So I think that's what I'll do. I am going to spin and alternate these two together. I am using my Ashford e-spinner and people like to know why I do the things I do. So I'll tell you why I'm using my Ashford for this. It has loops um, rather than hooks and when you have a very textured yarn with locks hanging off it's easier to get that yarn to go through the hook than it is or through the loop than it is on the hook where there's things hanging off it can snag on the hook and it can bind up and then you have to constantly stop and fix that uh, the other reason is that it has an eight ounce bobbin the bobbin's really big I'll just hold that up so you can see this isn't the biggest e-spinner that Ashford has. They have another one that's massive. It was a little too big for me. Um, but this does have the 8 ounce bobbin and so I can fit more on it and it has this orifice reducer. I can pull it out of there and now I have, see this goes in there so if you're spinning fine it doesn't vibrate as it knocks around in there, but you could take that out and then there's there's a bigger space for chunky or yarn to go through. So when I'm doing a big chunky spin, I like to use this. Plus I like that I can, you know, the way I can control it and stuff. Yeah. So I'm still debating on the auto wrapping. What do you think? Yay or nay? I think nay. I think I'm going to leave it off. I think we'll keep this one a little simpler. Um, I think it has enough sparkle. 
and I'm going to plan for it to be a single but if it does seem like it's gonna fall apart in some way then I might ply it I don't know we'll see when we get there I guess but time to get spinning so let's turn on the wheel E spinner there's no wheel <laughs> there's a motor <laughs> and a bobbin let's get spinning that works on any tool I always start with as little texture as the yarn design allows for the end of the yarn because that allows me to do things with it like cast on or not have bits fall off yet <laughs> so I'm just doing a nice thick single I'm letting it be a little thick and thin but it's not too thick and thin and I'm just letting the texture happen where it happens so I've got some texture coming here nice slubby bit I'm letting it happen but I am making sure that it'll like wrap on and be secure <laughs> there's that all right so after I've spun a little bit I am going to take this off and switch to a handful of locks so to do that I make sure I have lots of floof we're just gonna go floof on floof. I'm gonna look for a spot that's a little more fuzzy and a little less curly just to make sure that we can get a good join to start with. And I'll make sure we've got a good distance overlapping and let that twist build up in there because I don't want the I don't want the yarn to just kind of slip out while I'm trying to wrap on it. There. There we go. And we'll just do that. And this, I'm letting it be real thick. I'm not controlling it at all other than making sure, you know, that things aren't going to fall off of it. Drafting back a little bit just to make sure stuff is fuzzed so that it holds together. Like here, there's not enough overlapping. So if it's too much of a lock on a lock, they're going to slide up. You need all that fuzz to hang on. So you can always back up a little bit. Well, this is so much fun. So I'm just going to go back and forth like this with the locks and then with the sections of the blue and just let it, uh, let the texture flow. There we go. It can also help to have a, a little, like a hand card or a flicker on hand. Um, if you get an end where it, it doesn't want to floof out, you can kind of just kind of snag it a little bit to open it up and that can help. suppose I should slide my hook right <laughs> finished spinning this yarn and it is gorgeous on the bobbin. I can't wait for you to see, I can't wait to see <laughs> what this will look like in the skein. So uh, let's do that. Here it is. <laughs> it's beautiful. Let me make sure it's focused on the yarn and look at that oh not only is this self-striping in color it's also self-striping in texture and i think it looks so beautiful my plan for this is probably to crochet a hat with it it is a single i'm leaving it as a single and it is z-spun which for me crocheting in the round it doesn't tend to untwist if it is Z spun. Knitting in the round Z spun does tend to untwist for me a little bit. So I will finish this, but let's see how energized it is. Okay, it's not that bad. It's really not. For singles, it's it's really not that bad. I love this. I think this is just so pretty. <laughs> so tell me what you would do with this yarn. Would you weave with it, crochet with it, knit with it, um, something else with it? <laughs> what would you do with this amazing, sparkly, 
lock spun. Oh, it's so squishy. Oh, it's beautiful. What would you do with this yarn? Leave me a comment, let me know, and I will wish you all happy spinning, and I'll see you in the next one.